Well, the opening press conferences of Saints training camp wrapped up less than an hour ago, and Junior Gallette was a hot topic. Doug Mouton with more on what Mickey Loomis and Sean Payton had to say about the former Saint. Well, a Metairie man is accused of kidnapping his ex-girlfriend at gunpoint and raping her at his apartment. Um, well, I pretty much had to show them everything. Called a cock -a -hole. We don't want to get into that. But. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I don't know how to fish at all, so they have been awesome and helped me out. This Start time? on the bottom and oh. come right up through both lips. Hold him tight because he's going to wiggle when he feels a hook. <laughs> <laughs> been fun so far. Oh my gosh. Come on Natalie, please don't make me beg management <laughs> okay. for more time for this feature. <laughs> the mother of a 17 year old gunned down in New Orleans East talks about the shooting and why everybody in the house feared for their lives, including a four year old boy shot in the arm. Good evening. I'm Natalie Shepard. Tan is on assignment. Well, that mother is crying out for justice tonight. She told Paul Murphy young people need to stop the killing. The city parking officers caught on extended breaks and even retaliating against people who complained about them. Now, those are just some of the claims the New Orleans Inspector General is making in his latest report. Bill Capo has the story. A new video shows two computer experts hacking into a Jeep's computer to take control of the radio, air conditioning, and even the engine. As Chris Van Cleve reports, members of Congress are now pushing for cybersecurity protections to be applied to cars. There is an app for that. Leslie Sadowski, video blogger with Biz New Orleans, is here to tell us how the new apps may change the way we seek our medical care. So do these apps really bring a doctor right to your door? Looking forward to it, Doug. All right, well, this summer, a number of people have been injured in shark attacks, and inventors are trying to come up with devices to keep people safe. Well, a man takes his personal shark cage on a test run, but the goal isn't safety, it's comedy. We have the story of the block jaw still ahead. And Carl's back with the final check on the forecast. The good news for our area, not a Sharknado in sight. No, not in our area. I think in the D.C. area they have to worry about it <laughs> later on. Well, this is timely given the big premiere of Sharknado 3 coming up tonight, but a number of swimmers have been bitten by sharks along the Atlantic coast, and some people are taking some unusual steps to protect themselves. One man unveiled his device this past weekend, and it quickly went viral. But as Bob Tessa reports, this creation isn't exactly what it seems. Now, witnesses say they saw two young men swimming in the river just after 7 o'clock tonight near the steamboat Natchez dock. They surged from the air and by boat. Witnesses say one of the men got out of the water, but the other kept going out into the river. They watched as his head disappeared under the water, and then people started calling 911. Good evening, I'm Natalie Shepard. Tan is off tonight. A 2011 St. Aug graduate died this weekend as he tried to rescue a friend. Winton Yates has the story of Caleb Collins, who selflessly jumped into the turbulent waters off of Hawaii after seeing his fellow soldier being swept away. Well, former Saints linebacker Junior Gallette says he didn't start the Twitter war that many have attributed to him. Gallette spoke this afternoon with eyewitness sports reporter Lyons Yellen. Sports director Doug Mouton joins us now with the latest. Doug? Well, the debate over gun control continues to heat up in the wake of last week's mass shooting at a Lafayette movie theater. The police say John Russell Hauser, the drifter who killed two women and injured nine others, legally purchased a handgun from an Alabama gun shop last year. Now, that's despite being involuntarily committed for mental health treatment six years ago. He was also denied a concealed weapons permit in 2006 because of a domestic violence complaint. The problem is that not all states are reporting commitments and other court orders to the National Background Check Database. In St. Bernard Parish, State Senator J.P. Morrell announced a community meeting to address the problems in the water there with a brain-eating amoeba. Well, a North Shore man could have spent years in jail after investigators say he assaulted a police officer. And next, in an eyewitness investigation, how a cell phone video that helped vindicate the man is now helping him turn the tables on his accusers. If so, experts say you should treat your smartphone just like you would treat your computer when you're traveling. Well, back in March, investigative reporter Mike Perlstein revealed how a grainy cell phone video may have saved a North Shore man from serving decades in prison. Now in this follow-up story, Mike shows how that man has turned the tables on his accusers for what he calls a malicious prosecution. Well, and it's good to know that when the feels like temperature hits 105 here, it's football season. And it's time to get to West Virginia where the feels like temperature will be 70. All right. Don't, yes, don't brag. Exactly. Well, it's true. <laughs> We're back right after this. And I'm Natalie Shepard. The New Orleans Inspector General found at least two of the city's parking control officers who were supposed to be writing tickets 
were instead spending hours on extended coffee breaks. Well, in Tangipahoe Parish, parents petitioning to have the school year start after Labor Day because of hot weather did not get their wish this year. A new all-female crew is being added in Jefferson Parish for the next carnival season. Pandora has been approved to parade in Metairie. And the crew is a spinoff from the crew of Nix because more women are getting interested in joining a Mardi Gras crew. A Pandora will be accepting women over the age of 21. The crew will parade February 8th on the traditional Metairie route. Did the crab races go sideways? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to check into that. That's our news at 6. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night. We'll see you back here at 10. It happened in New Orleans East, an area seeing a spike in murders this year. Tonight, local officials are looking into what may be triggering the violence as the victim's family tries to cope with the tragedy. Tanya Dahl reports. On the North Shore, a former Bogalusa councilman pled guilty to charges that he pointed a gun at police during a disturbance call. A Braithwaite woman never thought she could have a productive life. She thought a birth defect and violence ended her hopes and dreams. Well, then the dedication of a man who moved here after Katrina, along with prisoners, and the unconditional love of a four-legged friend changed her life. Meg Ferris has the details in tonight's Medical Watch. The dozer was trained by inmates through a program with the St. Tammany Sheriff's Department. The shelter dogs are also trained at two other Louisiana state prisons.